Number 5. A bloated roster. With the seemingly endless bank account that WCW used to have, the company would never waste any time in snapping up free agents or stealing talent from rival promotions. A result of this would end up in a swollen roster for WCW, where the company began to struggle to give regular airtime and develop stories for the majority of its roster. This would eventually play a hand in the downfall of WCW. Fast forward to modern day, and Tony Khan seems to be on a spending spree over the past couple of years with the AEW roster, having spent huge amounts to secure talent away from the WWE in particular, with names such as Chris Jericho, Soraya, Will Ospreay, Kanosh De Takesta, and many more. This has resulted in the AEW roster growing rapidly, with seemingly not enough airtime or steady creative to support all of them, leaving many now missing from TV for months, sitting in the back, or rarely appearing in stop-start stories on TV. It's a situation that many fans and even former WCW stars such as Booker T have compared to Eric Bischoff's WCW. Number 4. Putting on huge shows When WCW beat the WWE in the ratings for 83 consecutive weeks, they were on top of the world. The business was red hot at the time and the WCW brand had gone global allowing them to draw huge crowds and put on sellout shows worldwide in places such as Japan. AEW has also followed in similar footsteps to WCW in this regard, hosting shows in some major venues and travelling internationally to the likes of the UK and Canada. From special shows such as Blood and Guts, which is actually a tribute to WCW's war games, to most notably events like AEW's All In pay-per-view from 2023 from Wembley Stadium in London, England. Shows like these with huge crowds make the company look legit and portray that they are just as big as the WWE to audiences watching. This is something WCW always did a good job of and AEW seems to be no different. Number 3. The Forbidden Door Before the Forbidden Door pay-per-view was forged, WCW had cross-promoted with New Japan Pro Wrestling many years beforehand putting on a number of super shows and showcasing each other's talents to new audiences. This proved to be a huge hit at the time, especially with the WCW New Japan Super Show which was promoted as the Starcade of Japan at the time. This is something Tony Khan has seemed to have taken note of, as he has formed a number of relationships with outside promotions, such as New Japan, to help produce shows such as Forbidden Door allowing audiences and wrestlers unique opportunities to experience some legendary matches and opponents that may not have necessarily crossed paths with. This also allows the wrestlers to gain much more recognition and develop their skills switching between promotions and brings an element of unpredictability that has helped set up some major matches and angles for the company. Number 2. Former WWE Wrestlers some of the most memorable moments in WCW history came from the shocking signing and debut of once famous WWE superstars, from the likes of The Outsiders with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash to the debut of Bret Hart. WCW was often guilty of snapping up former WWE talent as soon as their contracts had expired. In one case, WCW had signed Rick Rude away from the WWE and in a shocking moment, Rude was able to appear on both shows at the same time because he was not under contract with the WWE at the time, appearing only on a handshake deal with Vince McMahon for WWE Raw, which was still pre-recorded at the time whilst WCW Nitro was broadcasted live. Moves like this constantly added star power towards the WCW roster, and this is a technique that Tony Khan has also adopted. Khan has signed the likes of Tony Storm, Soraya, Brian Danielson, and even CM Punk, all of which helped draw much more eyes to the AEW product and allowing the shows to thrive with such top talent appearing regularly. As time has gone by, however, Tony Khan has been guilty of hoarding talent just to stop the WWE from being able to use them. Number 1. Financial Backing one of the key reasons that made WCW a juggernaut in the wrestling industry and able to compete with the likes of WWE on the highest level was due to the large financial backing the company had from its billionaire owner Ted Turner. From stealing top names like Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage to creating iconic set designs, WCW seemed to hold nothing back when it came to its finances. 
This is the exact same case for AEW with Tony Khan and his wealthy family. The Khan family owns the likes of the NFL's Jacksonville Jaguars, as well as the Premier League's Fulham FC, alongside many other assets. This has allowed Tony Khan to compete with the likes of WWE in bidding wars to secure top talent away from its competition, as well as putting in a tremendous effort into the production value of its shows. There are even homages to WCW within the AEW product, such as the Collision Colour Scheme being a WCW Nitro-esque aesthetic tribute, as Collision also errs on TNT, the same network that WCW Nitro erred on. Beside this, from set designs, to graphics, and even venues, AEW presents a clearly polished product much like WCW did at the time as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more wrestling content.